My name's Dana Harris Seeger. I am a painter and a printmaker, and today I am going to talk about intaglio printmaking here at Barn. So printmaking as an art medium is an indirect method of making an art piece meaning that we don't take paint or ink and apply it directly to the paper. What we do instead is we use a matrix that we make an image on. In this case, this is a copper plate. And then we put ink into that plate and print it using a press like the one behind me um, to make an image. So it's an indirect method of making art. And Printmaking as a genre um, encompasses a myriad of different types of um, materials and methods, um, one of which is intaglio. And if you um, have ever done potato stamping or rubber stamping, that is a relief method of printmaking. And it's completely different. But today we're gonna talk about the medium of intaglio printmaking, which also incorporates a lot of different types of media, which I have some examples of here. What intaglio means is to incise. So the Italian word intaglio, I-N-T-A-G-L-I-O, um, pronounced intaglio, is, uh, means to incise. So what that means for us is that on our plate, or our plexiglass, our metal, um, even a solar plate with some photo emulsion embedded in the surface. That means that the image is actually incised or bitten into the surface. So unlike a potato stamp where the image is on the top, you roll ink on it and then print from that, the image is actually in grooves. So we're making little grooves, whether that's by scratching into the plate with a metal stylus or using acid to kind of bite the surface um, or a photo emulsion to create the intaglio um, incising. That's how it's created. You can also use, I brought a plexiglass plate um, that has been etched using a laser. So that is also a way that you can create the bitten in um, part of the plate. This is an example of a plexiglass dry point print. And what we mean by dry point is that no ground is used. We just scratch directly into the plate. And I'm gonna demonstrate that method for you now. So I have a plate here. This is just a very thin, like 16th of an inch thin piece of acrylic. And I have a steel needle. So the needle is, um, like pretty sharp, you, you can just start scratching into the surface. You can also do this with um, a copper or a zinc metal plate. It's a little bit harder because you have to actually scrape through the metal. One of the cool things about using plexiglass though, as opposed to uh, copper, is that you can see through it. So I can use an under image to actually use as a reference to do my um, scratching and I can place that plexiglass or acrylic plate over my image that I want to create. And then I can just start scratching the lines into the surface. And because the acrylic is clear, when I put something black behind it, it makes it a lot easier to see. So now I'm just freehanding and the harder I push, of course, the squeakier it gets, but also the deeper the line. And I can reapply my stylus to make a thicker line. I can also use um, cross hatching if I wanted to emphasize like a darker tone. I can go one direction and then I can cross like a pen and ink almost, you can think about. You can always add lines, but once you have made a line, you have to live with it. <laughs> you can't fill it in. <laughs> so that's another thing to think about. Get a little leg here. The lines that you put down are what's going to be dark, so it's really a positive in that way. Whatever is left uh, plain is going to be wiped 
and it will remain the color of the paper. So I can treat it kind of like a pen and ink drawing where whatever I draw is going to hold the ink. So we're moving on to the next step. Once our plate is um, scratched and incised to our satisfaction, then the next step is to print it. And this is on a copper plate. One thing to note, because we're working on a plate that is thick and it has to go through the press, which is going to apply pressure. So we'll put our paper, printmaking paper, onto our image after it's been inked and it has to go through the pressure in order for that um, ink to be transferred to the paper. So what we have to do before we put any ink on and send it through the press is actually bevel or knock down that edge. If you're working on a plate that's really small, like this one's really skinny, it's only like a 16th of an inch, then you don't really have to do that because it's not um, not that thick. But anything over that, I would say, you have to knock that edge down to about a 45 degree angle. And that helps prevent the paper from getting cut by the sharp edges, the blankets that we're going to use on the press from getting cut on the sharp edges as well. Today I'm using a oil-based water soluble ink, which is made by Charbonnel and it's called Aqua Wash. The next thing you need to use um, when you're getting ready to print is something to apply the ink with. So I've got my old library card that I'm going to be scraping the ink on the surface so that it really gets in the grooves. Because if you were to use something like a brayer, it would only get the surface. And what we really want with Intaglio is to get inside those grooves. So you need to use something that's gonna force it in there. A piece of card cardboard works um, also. I have an ink knife for mixing up my ink. And then I also have what's called a tarlatan. And this is a starched piece of cheesecloth that obviously has been used before. But what we do is we bundle it up and we use it to wipe the excess ink off the surface. And because it's starched, it's kind of stiff, so it only grabs what's on the surface and it won't go inside those grooves and pull up any ink that we want to keep. So I'll show you how to do all those steps and then when it's ready, then we will take our paper. This is just a little sample of a printmaking paper. We've got some soaking in a water tub and as it soaks, the fibers kind of pull apart just a little bit you won't notice it, but it will be, you know, on a microscopic level. They'll pull apart and then they will get softer so that we can actually, under pressure, push them into the grooves and then pull the ink off. And that's the last step. So I've spread out a little of my ink over here. And most ink is what's called thixotropic. So it will separate and get stiffer as it sits. So what I wanna do straight out of the tube is kinda of condition it. I just wake it up, give it a little, hello, little morning stretch. Then I can take my little card Grab a bit of ink. You don't need a lot. And then I'm just dragging it over the surface of the plate. Now that the ink is on the plate, I'm gonna take my tarlatan and I'm gonna start with the part that's um, the dirtiest. <laughs> and I'm gonna make a little pad in my hand. 
and then I'm just going to wipe the surface. And I'm not digging into the plate, I'm really just sort of whispering, whisper touching the, the surface. And that is because I don't want, again, to pull the ink out of the grooves. I really just want to get it off the surface. As much as creating your image affects the outcome, scratching and incising and creating the surface of the plate, the inking has just as much to do with it. And if you've looked at any of Rembrandt's etchings, he has multiple states of the same plate, but they're just wiped differently. And you can, they look like completely different images. They look like he created more than one plate just because of how he wiped it. So sometimes you can leave certain parts darker, you can wipe extra in certain areas and make it more white. It just depends really on a lot on the inking. And where would printmakers be without the ubiquitous foam book? We're going to use some foam book pages to finish our wiping. The nice thing about paper is that it doesn't have any kind of tooth, so it won't go down into the grooves at all. And I like to finish my last step of wiping with paper because it picks up just the surface ink. And especially if you have an image that is prone to being overwiped or turning lighter, because you wipe too much ink out, if it's got really delicate um, lines, then paper wiping is going to be your friend. And so at this point I can choose if I want to kind of focus on one area over another. Maybe I want the light to appear like it's hitting in this area, so I'm gonna concentrate on wiping and highlighting almost like I'm erasing. And then I'm gonna leave some of this part with a little more plate tone so that it seems like it's more in shadow. As a printmaker, the process is a lot of the, the actual art making. And you might go through four or five proofs of the same image before you decide yeah, that's how I want to print it. And then we want to clean up this edge. So I'm going to take a paper towel and just wipe that edge before I put it on the press. Um, again, I'm not exactly sure how it's going to print until I print it, but I can make notes for myself like I paper wiped more on this area and less over here. And then I can even write that directly on the print so that I have that proof and the next time I come to ink it, I can say, oh, that's how I liked it. I want to do it like that again. Grab my paper towel. And without touching the surface, I'm going to just wipe that beveled edge. All right. Now I'm going to take it to the press, and then we will pull a proof. Okay, so we are placing our, our plate, not our print yet, on the nice clean bed of the press. And I'm gonna take my gloves off, go get a piece of paper that has been soaking. I'm gonna blot it with a towel so that it's just damp and not wet. And then we'll come back, bring it back, put it face down onto the plate. We'll put our blankets on and then we'll roll it through the press. So like with most printmaking, once you make the image and decide how you want to print it, the printing part goes really fast. So it's just a little bit bigger. So because this is just a proof, I'm not going to be too fussy about the borders. But if it wasn't and I was putting this in an addition, I would want to make sure that I have even borders around the a piece of newsprint goes on top because if any 
um, ink were to squeeze through or anything like that. We want to protect our blankets. And these are special blankets for the press. There are three different blankets. The first one is called the sizing catcher. It is the thinnest blanket and it does just what it says. It catches any sizing, which is glue in the paper or ink that might seep out. The next, the middle one is the cushion and it's the chunkiest, it's the softest. It does what it says. It cushions the, the roller of the press um, onto the paper and the uh, plate. And then the last one is called the pusher and it is the densest and kind of the middle thickness. And what it does is help grip the roller and push the, the bed through. And then we're going to roll the bed. And I've already set the pressure so we know how, um, how much is going to be pushing down onto the plate and the paper. So then we pull the blankets back carefully. Pull our newsprint, which just has a little bit of water. And then drum roll. Reveal. So if I like that, then I would make a little note here that said, I wiped more and I left this, and that's the process. So I have been making art pretty much my whole life. And um, when I told my parents that I wanted to go to art school, they said, great. I was like, yes. Um, so ever since then, I've been taking as many uh, art classes as I can. And when I was in undergrad, I took a printmaking class. And as soon as I walked in and smelled the inks, the oil-based inks, I was just like, oh, this is where I need to be. <laughs> so ever since then, I've been working in various printmaking methods from etching to lithography to you know woodcut and trying to just incorporate them together and into my paintings as well. Lithography is definitely my favorite. I really love to draw and paint, and it's probably the most direct method because what you do is take greasy materials, whether that's a greasy crayon or a greasy liquid that's dissolved, and you just paint and draw directly onto the surface. And it just, it's very tactile, and there's a lot of processes involved, uh, but it's, it just feels the most kind of drawing-like to me. And then I can make multiple copies of that, which is the beauty of printmaking. I focus a lot of my work on my ethnic heritage. I am a Baltic American, so my grandma was from Estonia and my grandpa was from Latvia. And so a lot of the work that I do has to do with that area of the world. Uh, I have belts and textiles and dolls and things from there that I incorporate. Um, and I was even fortunate enough to go to Tallinn, Estonia a few years ago. So I have a lot of visual references that I incorporate into my artwork. Um, I also use a lot of rotating objects, things like windmills, which are big in Estonia. But to me, they evoke a sense of time kind of turning and the past being present in the in my time with me, my ancestors, you know, as a part of me. I, um, as an artist and an educator, I have taught everyone from little kindergartners all the way up to, uh, you know, retired people. And it's super fun to see how similar people are when they find something that kind of sparks their imagination and their creativity. And so I would say if you have that sort of need or drive and you feel like you want to try something, then you should just make it as accessible as you can. It can be just potato stamping. I mean, something that's gonna get those creative juices flowing, I would say just start. Because if you have an idea and it's kind of restricting you or making you like think that it has to be perfect, then you're not gonna start. And 
For me as a creative person, just sitting down and drawing sometimes or going out and taking pictures, to me that is what gets my juices flowing. Um, go to the art museum, um, go somewhere where you can see artwork and get inspired. Um, I know Barn has a lot of classes that are for beginners. I teach a lot of classes for beginners because I know people want to learn and I was a beginner once too. <laughs> so if you don't take that, that first step, then you'll never get in, into it. I would encourage artists not to be kind of perfectionists. There is a time and a place for that and having a vision that you can manifest is important. Um, but at the same time, just being creative and using those materials as just materials um, is also important.